Hey everybody, Zach here for the Friday Fishing Report. Uh, once again, I've got another fly pattern for you this week. Uh, this is called the Par Fry. I got this one from Art Lindgren's book, uh, Central BC Patterns. Um, this is a pretty cool fly that's great for swing, for bull trout, rainbows. Also great this time of year once we uh, get some bigger fry hitting the rivers. This is definitely a must-have in your box. So you can swing this on a sink tip. I would definitely fish this in the fall as well uh, when the bull trout are keying in on the big white patterns that we like. Uh, for a hook on this one, I am using one that I don't carry at the shop currently. But it's definitely one that we can order in. It's an A-Rex NS156 traditional shrimp size 4. The big thing is you want a big gap hook. Uh, so the Gamagatsu B10S is a must-have. And uh, there's also the must-add deer hair stinger, which is a pretty cool hook for this one as well. So lots of different options out there. We're going to start with the body material on this one. And it's some Mylar tubing. So all I've done is I've kind of taken a length that's longer than I need because I can always trim it. And I've pulled out the core out of the inside. Sometimes you just need some coercing with a pair of scissors. And you end up with a hollow tube like so that you can squish. So I'm just going to slide that over the hook like so. And I'm going to try and get this guy to lock down. This can be a little tricky as it'll want to spin on you. So I try to get some nice snug wraps here. And I'm starting this with some red thread. Just so I can create a little... Um, hot spot there and you can see it wants to spin on me which I don't want so I'm going to really try to pinch that and lock it down get some nice snug wraps in there some 140 denier thread would be ideal for this I've only got 70 in red currently so that's what I'm using hopefully this doesn't break on me because I'm trying to apply a lot of pressure on there so far so good I'm just going to trim that off. I'm just going to slide this back just so it's at the start of the barb. I'm going to give us a few more snug securing wraps. I'm just going to take a little bit of super glue here and just kind of put some on my thread just to really help lock this down. I don't worry if this spins a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Now I'm going to whip finish. Um, so your traditional whip finisher isn't quite big enough. It's going to be too far back to get in there. So that's where you're going to want a longer one. That's quite a bit longer. So I'm going to come in here as it's trying to spin on me again. I'm going to try to give this a couple whip finishes here. The longer one just gives you that extra reach so it can go all the way around the material. I'm going to whip finish that like that. Super glue is going to hold in all that thread. And we are done with our red thread. Now I'm going to just pick at all the fibers there. This creates a cool little tail. And this unweaves it just by picking at it with a dubbing needle. You can use a brush too if you want a chunk of Velcro. And there you go. There's our tail for the fly. Or part of a tail for the fly. Now for the front. I'm going to use some 140 denier thread in white. Mine's kind of come out of the spool there. I'm just going to cut a new end. Shove that back into the tube. And there we go. So now I'm going to come in here right at the front of the hook. I'm really going to give some nice secure wraps here. As you can see it really wants to twist on me. Get that to seat nice and square. This stuff can be a little finicky at times. So it keeps wanting to spin on me. There we are. That's what I want there. A couple of nice secure wraps again. Really lock it down in place. Cut that tag end off. Now I'm going to come in here. Just kind of slide it back a bit to kind of puff up that body. And I'm going to trim the front of this like so. And there we go. So I got this funky little body here that's sticking up. I'm going to really secure all those loose ends so it doesn't go anywhere. 
as you can see I've got this done about hook eye and a half back from the hook eye and there's the body for the fly there now we're going to do a little bit of an underwing and for that I'm just going to use some polar flash in pearl number 2033 I've used this stuff in a lot of videos lately you know how much I love it it's a really cool flash to have I'm just going to cut a couple strands cut it off the hank I'm going to double that over I'm just going to trim that I'm going to tie this in right on top a little bit longer than the body I'm going to tie it a touch more onto my side of the hook and then I'm going to fold it over and tie it a little bit more on your side of the hook so we get a little bit of a V going on there then I can come in here, kind of just stagger cut, like so. That's my underwing for this fly. And next we're going to tie in the throat. I've done a few different materials for this. I've tried hackles, I've tried uh, some yarn and stuff like that. I find marabou is probably the best material for this. It creates a nice good throat on it. This is definitely optional, this part. Um, I find it kind of adds another little hot spot for the fly. So I'm just going to take a chunk off the stem and peel it away. Just kind of organize that a bit. Trim off any butt ends that I don't like. I'm going to tie this in a little bit longer than I need. I'm going to try to keep this all on the underside of the hook as best I can. And I can come in here trim all the excess away as far as I can tell there that's all in there pretty good come and clean this all up marabou's being marabou as difficult as it wants to be that's how it's being and I'll come in here and tidy up the head before I tie in my next material there we go before I do that invert the vise I'm going to come in here just like I would with a woolly bugger tail or something like that, I'm just going to rip the marabou. You never want to cut it, because it creates a lot of uh, too straight of an edge, which we don't want. We want it to be a little bit tapered, kind of like so. And that's our throat for the fly. Actually, I find that to be a touch long, so I'm just going to come in again and just ripping it with my scissors. And it gets things a little bit how I want it. That's going to be good enough for this one. And now our overwing is going to be a rabbit strip. So you can literally use any kind of rabbit you like. The first one I did was white. Um, the grizzly style are kind of nice. There's a million different colors of, the, of rabbit strips. It's one of my favorite materials. So we have a lot of different ones at the shop. I'm going to tie this in right on top. Like so, just pinching loop. I've been using this one for bonefish flies, so I've been cutting it off from the hide. It's a good way to help reduce bulk is to pull some rabbit off the hide before you tie it in. And I'm going to come in here with my scissors. And I'm going to trim the hide basically where the flash ends. And I'm going to cut it on a little bit of an angle just to help taper it. That's going to help all that flow nice and smoothly. It's a little crinkly. That's just how it comes out of the package. I'm not too worried about that. Once I start fishing that, that's going to straighten out. Now I'm going to come in here, make a little bit of a bigger head. So I got to put some eyes on this guy. So that's the beauty of the 140 thread is it builds up bulk fairly quickly. Bit of an extra length in this hook it makes it a little bit wobbly, not the end of the world. There we go. So I'm going to smooth that head out a little bit and into a whip finish. So that's basically the tying portion of this fly done, which is quite easy. And now we go into the head. So I'm just going to use some 
prism eyes, you can use flat eyes. A little bit smaller than a 3 16th uh, package here, doesn't say what size that is. So I'm just going to grab this guy, this is silver, you can use whatever color eye you like. Just make sure I get that right on the side. Like so. I'll get one more on my side. I like using dubbing needle to help me kind of put all those eyes in place. Now the fun part, a little bit of resin. This is the solar res thin. I'm going to add this in small stages. So the first one's going to be right on top, kind of fill in the gap between the eyes. Just going to put a good dollop on there, kind of let it settle in a little bit. If you want to poke at it, use your dummy needle, pull it forward a touch. Come in here, hit it with my light. Just for a few seconds. And I'll do the same thing on the underside. A little dollop. Just kind of fill in the gap between the eyes. And once we get it sitting how I like, give it another zap. And I'm going to do one more all the way around. This just helps to fill in any extra gaps that are there. So I'm use the applicator tip to kind of force it around. This creates a nice solid head for the fly. Using the rotary, I can kind of wind it around. This shapes everything, and then I give it a good little cure. As I go, just kind of slow it down a little bit. And that's it. So there you have it. It's a power fry. This one's a pretty easy one that goes together fairly quickly. Tie it up in a variety of colors. We got a bunch of the Mylar tubing in a bunch of different colors. Like I said, we got a million different colors of rabbit. We got different eyes. Um, so we got pretty much everything that you need to tie this guy. So come on into the shop, give this one a go, and uh, we'll see you guys next week.